friends, let me show you a few of the things blooming in the garden right now. I have some nasturtiums, and I just go around picking the different plants to eat straight up. A lot of the plants are clean right now. I help myself to the new leaves and the new blooms. And because it rains so much and um, it's early in the season, there aren't any bugs. Every day that I come out, the board gets taller and taller and uh, it seems like the blooms just multiply. And same thing, I'll just pick the blooms, munch on them. I'm going to have to start um, topping off some of these and feeding them to the chickens. They actually nibble on it, so I like that, but oh my gosh, there are a ton of honeybees all around this plant because they love the beautiful blue flowers. Over here, my cherry pops monarda is just coming back to life, so it'll bush out in a few more weeks. Over here, my calendula is growing nice and tall and lush and green with beautiful blooms. And it's just going to take up this whole entire space within a matter of weeks. I love it. I have a ton of little snap pea blooms coming up. They took a while to come up, but they're doing really good. And here's a giant sunflower. It's one of the mammoths, I believe, but um, for some reason it has multiple branches, so I don't know if it's true to that type or um, or if I, because I grew a mixture of sunflowers, so who knows if it propagated from something else, but I took the seeds from the biggest flowers so that I could have the biggest <laughs> plants and blooms. I can't believe how quick they grow. So here is the donut peach, along with some other smaller ones. But that is so awesome. I just bought the tree a couple years ago, planted it into the ground last year, and it's already making fruit for me. I love bare root fruit trees so much. My beautiful um, this called, oh, um, it's called Armeria. Oh my gosh, it took me forever to remember the name. So, this Armeria is doing really really fantastic it's got several blooms however my goji berry is getting out of hand it's it's growing kind of everywhere so i'm gonna have to pull these up maybe make some tea out of the leaves and here's a calendula i sewed in here i want multiple plants in multiple places kind of have it look really wild but at the same time just to have that variable type of plant growth like a polyculture over there I grew some strawberry leftover strawberry plants that didn't fit into the um, green stock gardens and above it is some nasturtium growing with my lychee my baby cakes blackberry which is thornless though it's my favorite thornless um, berry plant um, it keeps coming back it, every time it looks like it's dying and it comes back and I love it it's blooming oh my gosh this one's really pretty and um, unfortunately the birds or some creatures get to it before I do the fruit 
but I love that I have this variety. I, I just can't stand all those thorns. They're just, they're just too much. And my mums are coming back full force. This is so full. It's probably more than twice as big as it was the year before. My chives are flowering, so I hope they, um, I hope they don't die. Here's a beautiful Gerbera daisy. I love it. It's so pretty. And this other variety, I'm not sure what happened if the heat is affecting it, but the blooms aren't opening up like they were earlier, where they have larger blooms with the um, white petals and then the pink frills at the edges. So I'm not sure what's going on with this one. I'm happy to see that my citronella plants, the citrus citrosa, is doing so well. It smells really good mm, when you rub your hands um, through it, and then it makes these pretty little purple blooms. So um, this one's pretty quite tall, so I might take it down a little bit, but maybe after it stops flowering. My society garlic is making flowers again. It is so lush and healthy. I'm going to have to separate it out or something. It's so big. But for the time being, it's perfect. And so is my chrysanthemum. It is getting taller and leafing out really well. And it will bloom in late, late summer or early fall. Oh my gosh, as soon as the branches on the apricot tree started to leaf out, I wasn't seeing all these fruit. And somehow, every time I look at it, there are more and more fruit on the tree. How exciting. I love it. My apple tree is blooming. It's doing great. The Braeburn is this, this branch here. It's a four-in-one tree. And it looks like oh yeah, multiple uh, branches are blooming right now. Usually two or three of the varieties out of the four bloom. And so I'm excited this year that they're kind of all blooming now. That's fantastic. It was quite by accident that I um, have this snap pea growing with my apple tree, but it's now, um, I grew it next to this trellis, and now it's growing up the apple tree, sort of, and it's helping to protect the apple tree from um, the heat of the sun. It's offering a little bit of protection and it's producing food. So there's a ton of snap peas in here and snow peas. And unfortunately, it's hard to find these because um, the green kind of melts in with the leaves. But um, my scarlet runner bean never came up. Hi friends, so I have this blue Adirondack seed potato that I bought back in something like December or January and I haven't sowed it, I haven't put them in the dirt and now I plan to. I had bought two sets because I saw that they were purple and I didn't know that the first set I bought was Adirondack also, the blue Adirondack. So I threw that set into the ground and it started leafing out, which is wonderful. So I actually had um, some flower, some leaves that came up that were purplish in color. So not only are the, the sweet potatoes purple, but the leaves are too. So I'll show you the next time. I reburied the, 
the leaves and I'm just gonna keep mounding it up until I get tons until the end of the season so I can harvest a lot and I put mostly leaf matter so it'll be light and fluffy as the covering and then I added just a little bit of soil and over here I had like a sunflower growing and I tried not to bury it and something went and trampled over it and broke the leaves so that's sad so this is the biggest pot that I could find. It was for like a fruit tree. Last year it was growing a tomato and some Malabar spinach in it. And I believe the Malabar spinach is coming up, but I could sacrifice it. So what I'm gonna do is stick the sweet potatoes in here, cover it up with some leaf matter and a little soil, and hope that, you know, keep mounding it up and keep having it grow. Oh, here, here, here it is. So here's the leaf of that sweet potato. It's kind of greenish, but then it turns purple on the stems. So I have them in the container here, and it said to sow it for California back in January to April, plant it back in January, and I didn't do it because it had been so rainy January, February, even March, which is unusual for California. And I didn't want the the sweet potatoes to rot. And already, as you can see, it's starting to make the stems. And it's nice and purple. And the roots are coming up too. I don't know if you can see the roots. So the stems. So I hope it's not too late. It's kind of soft. And I hope it's not rotting. So I'm going to throw some leaves and then some soil on top. So I've added the leaf matter and some soil and mulch and I'm just going to leave it be and then as I see leaves come up I'll add more leaves and soil just to let it break down slowly. I won't water it too much because I don't want it to rot. That's the reason why um, you don't plant it over the winter. It doesn't like the cold and it doesn't like to be waterlogged. I have a pile of leaves over there and that's where I stockpile them and I just get them and I move them over to the sweet potatoes as I need them. And they're just along the chicken coop, along Borge Way. And this little section here is chock full of Borge and it's blooming like crazy and it's buzzing with bees. And I cut some of the branches that were sticking out so that I could get in there and I gave the uh, leaves and flowers to the chickens because they eat them too. So because I didn't harvest and eat the um, Okinawan spinach, it started making blooms. And look at how pretty they are. For a plant that has green and purple leaves, the flowers you would think would be green or purple, but they came out orange and they look like chrysanthemums or kind of like a little bit like lettuce leaf flowers so i'm just gonna wait till they open up bloom and then collect the seeds so it could grow a lot more so i threw some zinnia seeds in here some of them are popping up and i also threw some daisies seeds from that i got from my plants from last year and look, that same daisy that has the white frills and then with the pink edges, it's coming up with the yellow center. It's gorgeous. Tons of poppies, but no flowers yet. Those are bachelor's button, I believe. And my snap peas are kind of leaning over that area, which I don't mind. It's giving it some shade so it doesn't just burn up. It's getting so hot now. Within a matter of weeks, it went from 60 degrees to 80s. Fahrenheit, that is. This is my tallest sunflower yet. Still doesn't have a head yet, but it's going to have multi branches of flowers. Oh, there's, it's starting to make a flower right there. It's so hot that I watered these plants this morning at around 6.30 in the morning. And now the soil is already starting to dry. Over here, I just started the corn. 
I can't believe how quick it is coming up already. Um, I think I sowed the seeds like a week ago. <laughs> and this one is my Burgess cantaloupe vine peach. So that's awesome. I think I put five seeds in there and two are popping up. And the more I have the better because I'm going to share it with some friends and family and neighbors. So I have corn right here. Oh my goodness. They're coming up like the way grass does or canna lilies. So I was coming out here so that I could sow some new seeds, separate these tomatoes because there are about four to five plants to, per, to each pot. However, it's getting so hot, even with one layer on, I'm, I'm burning up. And, uh, but I'm just gonna water this soil one more time and then I'm gonna head inside and wait till it cools off before I sow any seeds because even these are drying out. And I love it because these, about two weeks ago, I sowed a ton of tomatoes and they're already popping up and they're catching up to these, which I sowed back in February. And those in the styrofoam containers, I separated them out already. So they have a little bit of a head start. Over here, I grew some cucumbers and then in the same pots, I put some dill and basil seeds, hoping to have a little salad garden. Um, some herbs with some cucumbers would be a great gift for friends and family. Hi friends, so I made a new garden bed in my enclosed garden space and I reused this fire ring because it was wrapped around my onions and garlic and chives. Um, my shallots are also in there and what I did was I pulled up the fire ring but first I wrapped it with this uh, cardboard with my husband. We wrapped it and then we got both this paper that comes in a roll with the jute twine from Home Depot and we wrapped it to make to keep it enclosed and then we went ahead and took the fire ring out so that I can make a new bed out of it. For the most part the soil stayed in place because the onions are the roots are holding it together so but I still wanted it enclosed so it doesn't fall apart over time as you water it. So now I have this new garden bed and I'm going to sow some fairy morse okra, Clemson spineless. And the reason why I choose this one, oftentimes I believe it's called spineless because it's not really tough. I mean, obviously you have to harvest it early on while it's still young, uh, but um, hopefully it's not as tough as some other, other ones. Um, so I'm going to grow this in here and I have two packs. So. I'm hoping to eat more of this because I believe it has some good qualities to it. Some people don't like okra, but I think it has some good qualities for your digestive tract. So all I did was move the fire ring over here, then I filled it with one bag of the miracle Grow Organic Choice Moisture Control Potting Mix and one bag of the Garden Bed Mix. So the Garden Bed Mix... Um, it's good for garden beds and has a lot of nutrients. And then this one is the potting mix. So it'll help it to not burn and has a lot of nutrients in it. Okay, as to how to grow the okra, it says it takes 12 to 14 days to germination. Plant it three quarters inch deep because basically the rule of thumb is the size of the seed is this, the, you double that um, amount that you, um, the depth of the seed to stick it into the ground. And spacing is three feet apart and days to harvest 56 to 64. So let's see, April, it's perfect. I'm about a couple, three weeks late, unfortunately. So this is what the seeds look like. Let me get it out to show you. 
So they look like this. And in fact, when you wait for the pods, the ochre to mature at the end of the season and let it harden and dry out, you, you'll shake it and you can hear the pods, the seeds um, inside the pods. And you can uh, harvest the seeds out and save them for the next year to regrow. So here I am, I'm gonna put them about twice as deep as the size of the seeds. Hi friend, my goji berry bush is getting so tall and so big and here I spotted, I haven't been around here, and I spotted a bunch of berries, a cluster of them, and I'm just going to harvest them and eat them. They're really sweet, I just had a couple already. And they're juicy and sweet, mmm, delicious. My Gerber daisy is blooming. I love it. It came back. Some of my fig trees are starting to bud. Oops. Right there. And others are budding out a lot faster. And my citronella plant is making beautiful little blooms. My mom is making lots of leaves. More mums. Calendula. Nice and lush and green. The sky is looking awfully gray. It was saying it, it was going to sprinkle Monday through Wednesday and rain on Thursday. It sprinkled a tiny bit this morning and then now the forecast is saying it's not going to sprinkle on Tuesday or Wednesday, but who knows. My baby cake's blackberry is blooming a ton. Remember all the blooms I had on my carrot care orange tree? Well, I didn't touch them, but I would go past the tree and the blossoms would fall as I bump um, up against it. And I guess it was actually a good thing because I saw in another channel the lady would pull off some of the blossoms so that the tree wouldn't have too many fruit because then you won't have large quality fruit. You'll have lots of less, you'll have greater quantity but less lower quality fruit. So, but I see a ton of little baby fruits. And this tree is probably four to five years. So, and it's really short for some reason. It's, um, but that's okay. I don't mind. I'll give it all the time it needs to grow. I'm just glad it's alive and well. There are just baby fruits everywhere. My hookra is thriving in the shade where it likes to be. I love the neon yellowish green leaves against the pink blossoms. So pretty. My apricot tree is making lots of fruit. Love it so much. And here's my Bartlett pear making cute little blooms. I love how smooth and shiny the leaves are. That's my Asian pear tree and it's the Shinseki pear. And the leaves are also very beautiful. And after it had broken that little piece there, it's making new branches and growing upwards. My pineapple guava made a ton of these little balls here. Those are the little buds. And today I came out after working and everything 
and I see that there are blooms already and guess what guys this is edible um, I didn't get a single fruit lasher because as I was waiting for it to ripen it ripens towards the end of fall so I was waiting for it the fruit to ripen and something ate every single one of my fruits I was so upset so this year I might beat them to the punch and eat all the blossoms I don't know <laughs> I'm, I'm that um, upset about it that whatever it was ate everything um, but there are so many buds so so many so I don't know if I'm gonna be able to share but the fact that it ate some of the all of the fruit and I didn't have a single one was upsetting Hmm, the, bus the blossoms taste pretty good. They have a good taste. Guys, this is my Feijoa tree, and it is so big. Since we got it, it was just like three feet tall when we got it, and now it's like six and a half, seven feet tall, and it has a lot of these buds all over, all over, and then I came out and I saw that it's blooming, and it's so gorgeous. I love the pink against that greenish silver color and it's just all over the place it's so pretty um, and the buds the flowers are edible and last year something I was waiting for the fruit to ripen and it was like late fall and I didn't watch I didn't keep my eyes on it and then before you know it something ate every single fruit off of it I did not find one single fruit when it had that was the first year I had so many fruit so what I'm gonna do is eat more of the flowers this year and beat it to the punch isn't that gorgeous and it and the flowers taste really good It's kind of like sweet with like a um, very distinctive flavor. I can't really describe it. Mm-hmm, it's good. And underneath this, I'm gonna have to prop up this branch, but Underneath the feijoa, underneath the feijoa are my strawberries, my extra strawberries that I didn't fit into my um, towers, my two green stock towers. But look at that, they have blooms, and look at that baby strawberry. I'm so, so happy, and there's another one over there. And here's another one forming. Oh, I'm so excited. I gotta come weed this area though. My apple tree has blooms and now it's starting to make the fruit. As you can see, it's a four in one apple tree. So I have a lot of squirrels in this property and some possums and some raccoons. And all those guys come here and forge through here and eat everything. It's very upsetting. Here is my um, snap pea and it's growing up, climbing up and up and up and I love it. My beanstalk. Mm. I just walk around and munch on different things and I get a variety of foods in just a short little walk through my garden. These are onions I grew from bulbs. Here is a sunflower that I must have plucked this, um, stuck this seed in the ground early on and forgot about it. Or I plucked it, I stuck it here and it migrated over to here. 
but also last year I had a sunflower nearby and it bloomed and then something went into I bagged the flower something still got into it and ate a lot of the seeds and maybe they dropped some seeds here so I have a sunflower here oh my goodness I didn't know that so California poppies it, this this flower was blooming just a couple hours ago and now that it's uh, the sun is setting it closed up I didn't know it closed up I mean that they close up at night that's pretty cool so today I came out here because it sprinkled this morning and I didn't come out in the morning but when I came out in the afternoon this huge sunflower that I have here that's as tall taller than my fence my garden enclosure um, it was toppled over so what I'm thinking is something like a so this afternoon I came out here and I saw that this really tall sunflower had been bent down and I thought it was broken I was so upset but upon closer inspection I see that all it did was bend it down there where the base of the sunflower is and it's already a little bit sideways so so it didn't break thank goodness so then I tied it up with some ribbon to my fencing in two different places so I'm hoping that it will be okay and um, it's already starting to flower this one is a multi branching um, sunflower so it's going to have lots of little sun sunflowers in just the little pockets of the sunflower so and here's one I, this one's lying down so I'm going to have to tie it up but I'm so happy that I'm getting a lot of flowers right now so in and amongst my golden raspberry which is starting to flower is the sunflower so I just walk around and I just throw seeds into pots or into the ground wherever I see fit just randomly here's another sunflower and here is my donut peach I love how they're like stubby little fruit and they're greenish and now they're turning pink Wow, and they're really fuzzy looking. <laughs> so I planted some Adirondack sweet potatoes. They're like a blue, uh, purple color potato, sweet potato. And the leaves are already coming up and I've just been layering leaves and soil over top of it. So I'm gonna have to do that again so that by the end of the season I'm going to have lots and lots of sweet potatoes, I'm hoping. Here I have sowed some seeds in five pots. I have probably, you know, seven or eight or several seeds in each pot and I might separate them or leave them in there. I haven't yet decided, but let me show you what kind of seeds I sowed. I've been making a plan to sow seeds every week and I want lots of food and lots of flowers for aesthetics and to draw in pollinators. So I um, sowed about seven seeds, I think, of this melon early silver line. And um, I don't know if it's the same as the Korean melons, which look similar. So we'll see um, how this tastes. And I'm gonna separate them out to give to friends and family. 
I also sewed this marigold orange Hawaii. Supposedly they're pretty tall and really, really big flowers. It says large deep orange flowers four inches across very striking and beautiful grows to three feet tall so that sounds fantastic and it's a marigold in case i didn't say that and then i sewed some sunflowers fun sunny hybrid mix which looks so pretty they grow to four to four to six inches I mean, four to six feet tall. And then this Fairy Morse Magic Roundabout Sunflower. And that grows to about six feet tall. And it says to grow it in pots, which is kind of crazy because how tall they are. Um, I might transplant them somewhere, like by my chicken coop to make it prettier. I don't know yet. And then I want this Blue Better Sage. I love the purple. And um, I want to incorporate more purples. I have a ton of pink flowers in my garden, like everywhere. Pink to pink purple um, or hot pink, but not too many purples, which I want. My one thing that's different is my pineapple sage, which is has red flowers. And then nasturtiums, which have orangish flowers. So I want to make it colorful. Um, I want to make it very scented in the garden with lots of herbs and then very productive with fruits and vegetables as well. So every week I'm going to sow a lot of seeds. I've given away some, um, some crops to my friend already and I'm going to continue to do that week after week. Next I sowed some artichoke green globe in a pot because that's what it says and I'm not sure how big it's going to get hyssop and it's hyssop bee balm wild bergamot it has a nice scent and it'll attract pollinators and the anise hyssop I think you can make teas out of it and bee balm lemon so that's a good addition to the garden for for color and to attract pollinators. I got these nice new ladybug containers. You, it has these scissors which end in a little capture, so you can capture it. Then it has tweezers and. It's got a magnifying glass and a net, and it was $5 at Target. So, this is the little lid, and it opens up down here. I already did. So, it opens right here and it spins up and you take out these and their little set is right here it's pretty big inside it has a netting outside and a little handle then use the tag it says bug kit And over here, you have this one, which is basically a mushroom top that opens. It's a little screw-on cap. It's got little things inside. It has the same thing, except for it's different colors than this one. I think the colors match the boxes or containers. This was also five dollars at Target. And the lid has little holes in it so then the ladybugs or whatever bug you're putting in it can breathe. This one's nice and clear and it's got a little handle.